Hi guys and welcome back. Um, so today we're going to be looking at how great a burden the Treaty of Versailles was for the Weimar Republic. And um, in order to do that, we need to first look at the specific terms of the treaty. Um, so the war had ended with an armistice agreement on the 11th of November, 1918. And although Germany was on the brink of defeat, the armistice was not a surrender. We need to make sure that that distinction is clear. Um, it was an agreement to stop fighting and withdraw German forces from ocu um, occupied territory pending a full peace settlement. And a conference to settle the peace terms between the Allied powers and Germany met um, at the Palace of Versailles outside Paris in January 1919. The Germans weren't actually invited um, to attend or allowed to see the terms of the treaty until the 7th of May. Leaders representing about 75% of the world's population attended, yet the defeated powers were excluded from all major decisions. Death rather than slavery is what thundered the nationalist right-wing newspaper Deutsche Zeitung um, in response to the Treaty of Versailles. But it wasn't just the right that was infuriated with the treaty. Virtually the whole German nation rejected it. Even the government was split over whether to accept it, but in the end, they actually had no choice. And the threat of the allies to resume the war and the fear of um, total German dismemberment led the government reluctantly to urge acceptance. And that's exactly what happened. And the Constituent Assembly finally did so in June, 1919 by 257 votes to 138. Now, German outrage is explained in a number of ways. Um, most Germans as late as spring 1918 had expected victory and to make major gains during the war. The sudden collapse of their hopes bred anger as well as frustration. And secondly, Germany hoped that the 14 points proposed by Wilson in 1917 as a basis for the treaty would lead to a fairer peace for Germany. Well, they were in for a major shock. The 14 points were applied selectively so that millions of Germans were denied their national rights. The German government was excluded from negotiations and merely asked for comments within 21 days of the final draft. Two minor amendments were made and then finally on the 28th of June, the Versailles Treaty was signed by all the powers and it imposed much harsher conditions on Germany than most, Germany's had, most Germans had expected or were prepared to accept. Instead, the settlement was imposed as a diktat, a dictated peace, because Germany had not been allowed to participate in the conference or to negotiate over the terms. This provoked political crisis in Berlin and led to the formation of a new coalition government, which we will look at next time. In addition to this, the Allies partook in the deliberate humiliation of Germany at the Paris Peace Conference. Firstly, the venue had been carefully chosen. It was the very same place where after France's defeat after the Franco-Prussian War in 1870-71, Wilhelm I had proclaimed Kaiser or had been proclaimed Kaiser of a unified German nation state. And Otto von Bismarck, if you remember, the Chancellor of Prussia, had consciously chosen Versailles as the stage for symbolic humiliation of a recently defeated France. Now the tables had turned and the opportunity had arisen for France to avenge the humiliation. Also, before being read the terms, Müller and Bell, the two German emissaries, had um, first proceed past a long line of permanently disfigured French veterans who were living um, reminders of the damage inflicted by Germany. Colonel Edward House, the key diplomatic advisor to um, President Woodrow Wilson, actually noted how the whole affair was elaborately staged and made as humiliating to the enemy as well it could be. So what was actually decided? Well, the first we will look at was territorial losses. And the treaty actually removed over 70,000 kilometers squared, which is the equivalent of 13% of German territory and all took all Germany's overseas territories as well. The districts of Eupen and Malmedy, subject to plebiscite, which means, you know, to vote, uh, were to be handed over to Belgium. 
the province of Alsace-Lorraine was returned to France. Um, Lorraine possessed rich iron ore deposits and had been taken by the German Empire from France in 1871. Um, North Schleswig, um, subject also to vote, was to be handed over to Denmark. West Prussia and Posen was handed over to Poland to separate East Prussia from the main part of Germany, creating the Polish corridor. And this meant that Germany was actually cut in two and it gave Poland access to the sea. Now over 1 million Germans now came under Polish control without being consulted. And on top of it, you know, many Germans considered Poles as inferior. Now Upper Silesia um, was voted to be divided between Poland and Germany. Danzig, um, the German city and port was made an international free city under the control of the League of Nations. Memel, if you see here, um, was seized by Lithuania in 1920. The reunification of Germany with Austria, which is also known as Anschluss, was forbidden, if you see Austria down there, and all major rivers were also to be open for all nations and to be run by an international commission, such as the Kiel Canal, just there if you have a look where I've put the red ring. Finally, the Saarland, just here, um, which contained rich reserves of coal, was separated from Germany and placed under the control of the League of Nations for 15 years. And what this really meant was Germany would then supply France, Belgium and Italy with free coal as part of the reparations agreement. France was also allowed to exploit coal mines in the area. So overall, what this meant then is that Germany lost 13% of its territory, 12% of its population, which is the equivalent of 6.5 million people, 48% of its iron ore, 16% of its coal, and 15% of its agricultural production. That is a significant amount of its country's resources, which, has now been, which have now been taken, taken by the Allies. The second key aspect of the treaty was disarmament. Now, under the terms, Germany was forced to abolish conscription. It was asked to, well, forced to reduce its army to 100,000 soldiers, limit its navy to um, 15,000 men, six battleships and no submarines. Um, it had to surrender all heavy weapons. It was forbidden from having an air force and had to permanently demilitarize the Rhineland. That is, Germany couldn't keep troops there and had to disband fortifications, um, which would hopefully give France the buffer zone that it craved. In addition, to ensure German compliance with Versailles, an allied occupation of um, would, would be based in, um, in, in the Rhineland and were expected to last um, there for 15 years. A third key aspect and arguably the most hated cause of all was Article 231, the War Guilt Clause. And Germany was forced to sign Article 231, accepting blame for causing the war and therefore made Germany, Germany liable to the huge um, reparations or to pay the huge reparations to the Allies to cover all the losses and damage suffered during the war. And actually, if we want to quote the article, what it said was, Germany accepts the responsibility of Germany and her allies for causing all the loss and damage to which the allied governments and their peoples have been subjected as a result of the war. Now you can see behind me an incredibly famous cartoon of the small Germany being grasped by the hands of the allies and being force fed the pill of the peace terms and if you can see the allies who are spooning the pill into the German mouth are actually standing on the, the pill packet called big four pills worth millions. Okay, so that's just demonstrating the idea that Germany it was a tough pill to swallow and because of the huge reparations and the significant amount of damage that it was going to do to the German economy and to German uh, morale. And finally, the fourth element that, um, that was sort of key to consider is the reparations. And it was agreed that the sum would be fixed later by the IARC, which is the Inter-Allied Reparations Commission. But in 1921, the sum was fixed at 6.6 .6 billion pounds or 132 billion gold marks, um, which is the equivalent, equivalent of 196 billion pounds today. 
Germany also had to make substantial payments in kind, which is things like coal, um, they had to hand over to the Allies most of its merchant shipping fleet, railway locomotives and rolling stock, patents and overseas investments as well were all handed over. So were these terms as fatal as once thought for Germany? What was Germany's reaction? And was their reaction justified? So we're going to look at answering those questions in our next lesson. <laughs>